Over the last couple of years, facial recognition technology has advanced rapidly. A lot of this is in due to the part that all of our mobile devices, from smartphones, tablets, and laptops, have built-in cameras, creating this new industry, Lindsay, called biometrics. Yeah, and the, the shift into biometrics really has come from the huge uproar of Edward Snowden when he released those documents saying that the U.S. government was trying to basically create a facial recognition program, so digitizing people's faces, using algorithms to create profiles of the entire planet. And they actually managed to hack into almost 2 million Yahoo user accounts, as many of us know, and then record the behavior of people and create facial recognition profiles. So this is scary for a lot of people. Yes. Um, and it's funny because when I first came across this was Facebook using it to tag people and I thought that was creepy and then well, suddenly the NSA is using it like you had mentioned to digitize people and they if they had if they had it their way they would digitize the entire population so they could track when people are going or if they see someone in a subway who's that enhance oh that's so and so and it is a little freaky but at the same time it does create a debate because uh, one coin uh, one side of the coin it's convenient yeah, I mean, we're really talking about the difference between or how comfortable are people giving up their privacy for the sake of security. Now, Andy, I have to say that I'm okay with it to a certain extent. I'm okay with the idea of the entire human population being profiled, um, for cameras being able to watch us and and know our and, and create profiles on us. I'm comfortable with that because I don't feel like I have anything to hide. And I like the idea of people that are doing mischievous and naughty things kind of getting caught, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, I'm on the other side of the fence with this, Lindsay. I think that this is freaky. Like, what, what? we might as well just give our DNA when we're born to the government and let them track us for the rest of our lives. The thing is, as soon as you give away your civil liberties, it's very hard to get it back. You almost have to have a revolution, like what we saw in the 1700s in France, to bring the powers back to the people. And we're going way too far on, on with this right now, and it, we still need laws to enact to, to essentially protect us. I hear what you're saying, Andy, and I think that maybe there's a middle ground on this. Like Maybe the scary part is the fact that the government, of giving all that power to the government and us not having any transparency on the type of information. So perhaps if, if there was some sort of, and I'm being a little bit optimistic here, but maybe there's a third party organization that could organize it and, and be responsible for that transparency, taking that power away from the government, maybe that would be a solution. Uh, I'm still scared about that because anytime you take data and you put it on a server and somebody wants access to that, they'll, they'll find a way to get it. And when that data is, is taken away, imagine, imagine a hacker has the entire US population's you know, facial profiles. That is a real scary thing to do. And it's something that personally, I am just not comfortable with. Let us know your thoughts about this on our website, getconnectedmedia.com, to continue this conversation about video surveillance and privacy. I'm going to plant a chip in your arm, nanotechnology, and track you everywhere. I've already so planted I, a chip in your shoe. In my shoe. <laughs>